nuclear power has had a major impact on the world since its introduction as the atomic bomb, and continues to influence the world today. The focal point of the development of nuclear power was at the Los Alamos lab in New Mexico, where scientists from across America flocked in to be a part of this step forward in science. Their goal was to build the world's first atomic bomb, but the scientific principle behind the bomb had come from Europe and the pre-World War II discovery that a uranium atom could be split, producing a chain reaction and a release of energy. America's involvement began when Albert Einstein, at the encouragement of several other scientists, wrote letters to President Roosevelt about the possibility of nuclear fission, leading to the construction of new, extremely powerful bombs, and that there was a danger that Hitler might build the bomb first. And I heard a talk by President Roosevelt, a talk to scientists, telling us Hitler was a very real danger to the whole world. But it was the bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, and America declaring war on Japan and Germany that provided the big push. By 1945, $2 billion were spent on making the goals of the Manhattan Project a reality. Led by nuclear physicist Robert Oppenheimer, the project assembled some of the greatest scientific minds of their time, Teller, Fermi, and others. They wanted to create nuclear fusion and they needed uranium-235 to produce the chain reaction. They had to keep the elements separated until the right moment to control the chain reaction and explosion. They finally developed an implosion device that used explosives to compress uranium-235 into a spherical core of plutonium-239, starting the fission reaction. This first atomic bomb, nicknamed the Gadget, was hoisted to the top of a tower on July 16, 1945 in what is now White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. Once the bomb was ready and all personnel were clear of the area, a countdown began, a countdown into the nuclear age. We are now prepared to destroy more rapidly and completely every productive enterprise the Japanese have in any city. One month later, on August 6th, a modified B-29 bomber, the Enola Gay, flew into history when it dropped the atomic bomb, codenamed Little Boy, in the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Three days later, another B-29 bomber, Box Car, delivered the second bomb, Fat Man, in the Japanese city of Nagasaki. The first bomb alone killed 100,000 Japanese, most of them non-combatants like women, children, and the elderly, in less than nine seconds, and injured more than 40,000 others, with at least 20,000 missing. The second bomb killed an additional 80,000 people. The first reaction which we had was one of fulfillment. Now it has been done. Now the work that we have been engaged in for so many years has contributed to the war. The second reaction was, of course, one of shock and horror. What have we done? What have we done? And the third reaction, it shouldn't be done again. I think it would have been good to have stopped a little sooner, maybe after VE Day. I think it certainly would have been good never to have um, used the thing on the city, uh, and certainly never to have used two of them. Though many were horrified by the effects of the bomb, the American people were happy that it ended the war. The technology of the atomic bomb was made progressively smaller and was eventually capable of being used on devices from artillery shells to intercontinental ballistic missiles. This only heightened the public's fear of a nuclear attack as part of the Cold War between the US and the USSR. Military use of nuclear power wasn't limited to bombs. It was also eventually used to power naval vessels. The first nuclear submarine was the Nautilus, completed in 1954, 
and led to a whole class of submarines. Nuclear power is also used to power U.S. aircraft carriers, guided missile cruisers, and icebreakers. After the atomic bomb, physicists developed the more powerful hydrogen bomb, which used nuclear fusion to create an immensely more powerful explosion. A 100 megaton bomb is about 7,000 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The world had entered the thermonuclear age and lived with the fear of total destruction by war. But nuclear power had other uses besides war. In 1955, the first nuclear power reactor went online briefly. It provided power temporarily to the little city of Arco, Idaho. It was thought that power could be made so cheaply that it would be free. But today, only about 20% of America's power is nuclear, compared with France's 80%. What happened? The future of nuclear power was called into question on March 28th, 1979 when Harrisburg, Pennsylvania's Three Mile Island nuclear reactor underwent a serious meltdown. So I was first apprised of this problem early yesterday. We have activated state health and environmental experts and called immediately upon technicians from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the United States Department of Energy, as well as other private sources. A meltdown is when you lose coolant water and the reactor gets so hot that it melts through everything, including the casing and the bottom of the reactor. The event actually released little radiation into the surrounding area, but it induced a fear of nuclear technology in the general public. Then, in April 1986, that fear was realized. In the Soviet Union, in what is now Ukraine, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor exploded during a test. This event released radiation over an area 1,700 times larger than Three Mile Island. 200 times the number of people were exposed. 30 people died, and 209 were treated for acute radiation exposure. But meltdowns and explosions are not the only problems with nuclear power plant design. Another problem is the transportation and storage of radioactive waste produced by nuclear fission. Some nuclear waste remains dangerous for hundreds of thousands of years. Billions of gallons of nuclear waste is stored underground, where it is leaking into groundwater. Nuclear power has many barriers to overcome for its safe use. Today, nuclear reaction is used productively in our daily lives, in our homes, in medicine, and business. Common smoke detectors use a radioactive isotope to ionize smoke to detect it. Another offshoot of nuclear technology is the world's most accurate clock. The atomic clock uses the oscillations of atomic particles to track seconds instead of a regular clock's balance wheel. Nuclear technology has also yielded new fields of medicine, giving us the ability to map the human body with magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, using signals from water molecules. There is also the PET scan, or positron emission topography, which can map the body with the injection of small amounts of radioactive material. And brachytherapy is a cancer treatment where oncologists place a dose of radioactive material directly into a tumor. The holy grail of nuclear technology would be the development of a fusion reactor with a sustainable fusion reaction. A fusion reaction combines atoms and creates more energy than a fission reaction, which splits atoms. A fusion reactor is able to produce huge amounts of power with only two different isotopes of hydrogen as fuel, and only harmless helium as the byproduct. A fusion reactor would be better for the environment, would eliminate the need to bury the waste, and would provide more power than current systems. This technology appears to be a long time coming since scientists and physicists have been working on the development for more than 45 years, and as of yet, more power is put into creating a fusion reaction than we get out of it. President Obama, in his State of the Union address, has called for a new generation of safe, clean nuclear power plants. Perhaps now is when nuclear power will truly come of age and fulfill its promise.